hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is faith and today guys i'll be checking out this video from officer tatum and it's titled charleston white blast black people for their hypocrisy and you guys i'm super excited for this if i had to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about now let me tell y'all what y'all need to hear we f***ed up as a race of people since y'all so caught up into my delivery five percent of children now are catching hiv from ages 13 to 21 what y'all worried about 85 percent of the new chlamydia all the new cases are teenagers what y'all so caught up about only 35 percent of most kids in inner cities can read on or above their grade level what the y'all talking about these kids can't read bro this is the realest thing you ever gonna hear This video is brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com gets you a Trump on the Chump shirt today. <laughs> I can't stop talking about this shirt without laughing at it. It's the funniest shirt ever. You can troll everybody at the Christmas party, at the ugly sweater uh, uh, event, or wherever you're going. All your liberal family members, troll them hard. Buy this for your uncle that's voted Democrat his whole life. Uh, you can get it at Tatum Store, 30% off. You don't need a code. I, I just feel like this is the season of giving, 30% off all the way through Christmas, even on Christmas Day, because some of y'all want to buy people stuff on the same day. 30% off, you ain't got to put a code in. It automatically uh, uh, affects your, your order at checkout. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, Charleston White. Some of you guys may not know who Charleston White is. Charleston White is a dude from Fort Worth, Texas, which is where I came from. Now, I never had a chance to talk to Charleston because I don't know what school he went to. I went to uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. My daddy went to Trimble Tech. My mama went to Dunbar. Uh, whole bunch of, it's a whole bunch of people I know went to. I know people went to Poly. Went to, so I don't know O.D. White. I don't know uh, where Charleston went to, but he's from the hood. He from, he from around the parts where I, I grew up at. But Charleston be out here gutting. The truth. I mean, he he he's he's shooting it straight. Now he say some weird stuff every now and again. Charleston may get on here and say something real crazy and racist or something crazy. But majority of what he be saying is the realest stuff you'll ever hear. That's true. If you just get through some of that stuff he say that's kind of off color, the realest, most accurate, most authentic thing you'll ever hear about the black community. Ever. Nobody would ever say the stuff Charleston say, ever. And I don't have no street credit to say what he be saying. I ain't never did no time in prison. I ain't never did none of that. Charleston got enough street credit to be saying the stuff that he's saying, and he in the hood. And so I want you to listen to this because I want you to send this to every black person you know that be crying about social justice and be mad at Brandon Tatum for what I'm saying, calling me an Uncle Tom Coon sellout bootlicker <laughs> for the things I'm saying. Agree with what I'm saying, but then mad because I'm saying it in front of white people. Send, send in this clip and ask them, do you disagree with anything Charleston say? Anything. Wrote a clip. See, this, see, this is the thing, Charleston. Like, I, I think everything that you're saying. And Cam Newton is the guy that's interviewing him. If you don't know who Cam Newton is, he lost the Super Bowl. Uh, when he didn't get that fumble against the Broncos. But no, nah, I'm just, I'm joking. A, a, a tremendous football player. One of the greatest, I, I think he's one of the greatest athletes to ever play quarterback. But he's doing the interviews right now. He, he got his little podcast set up where he's doing this. I hate the way he dressed. He annoys the living daylights out of me. <laughs> but regardless of that, I have respect for him. Wrote it has clip. some truth to it. It's just the, the delivery. Oh you standing, there's no denying that you're standing for and by your people. Well, here's the thing. Uh, when you're addressing evil, you can't worry about the delivery. When you're looking at the conditions of our community, you can't worry about the evil when you got kids that kill kids and say, we smoking on Tuca. See, they wasn't worried about the delivery when these kids in Chicago were talking about smoking on Tuca. Mm -hmm. They weren't worried about the delivery. I ain't got no manners for no shit. I'm going to put my thumb in her butt. <laughs> the delivery? Mm. I like girls kissing girls where I'm from. And that's on the radio. Wow, you guys. I love the way Justin White is talking. And everything he's saying is on point. Let me know your thoughts on this one. And let's continue. 
girls on girls. That's they, that's promote lesbianism to my daughter as we drive mm. to school. This song they playing with Drake. Y'all worried mm. about the delivery? These niggas talking about killing each other. And they really that nigga thug said I shot at your mama. You don't mention me no more. He really shot that mama. And y'all worried about my delivery? These niggas are confessing to murders on songs. And y'all worried about my delivery? <laughs> the conditions of black sucking yeah. them, talking about booty hole? Y'all worried about my delivery? Come on, don't be hypocrites, black people. Mm. Y'all can't listen to this music if y'all so caught up in the my delivery. That's true. God dang. We still got a whole minute left. <laughs> God dang. Do anybody disagree with what Charleston said? Of course, far? no one. I already know the answer is no. Don't do me like that. And the way y'all snap and pop y'all to this music, the way y'all kill and drill to this music, don't trip about my delivery. Hey, yo, easy. Why you wear your pants like that? I wear my pants like that because that's easy access, baby. Easy. Why you talk like that? I talk like that to get my point across. Because when I wasn't talking like that, wearing a bow tie, y'all wasn't paying me no attention. And I was going to the Supreme Court changing laws and legislations in this country. I was working with over 50 U.S. congressional members from Ted Cruz to Mark Rubio, Senator John Cornyn. I was on the front page of the American Bar Association Journal. I had done a study with News 21, Walter Conkrike School of Journalism. Y'all wasn't paying attention then. So I gave y'all what y'all want. A ignorant mother. Nigga that talk like them rappers. <laughs> now y'all listening. Now y'all paying so funny, attention, man. huh? I got y'all attention, checkmate. Now let me tell y'all <laughs> what y'all need to hear. We f***ed up as a race of people since y'all so caught up into my delivery. 5% of children now are catching HIV from ages 13 to 21. What y'all worried about? 85% of the new chlamydia, all the new cases of teenagers. What y'all so caught up about? Only 35% of most kids in inner cities can read on or above their grade level. What the f*** y'all talking about and these kids can't read? <laughs> Come on, my n***a. <laughs> now, you this know, the whole serious. interview was crazy. I saw a whole bunch of other stuff that he was saying. And, and Cam Newton, um, you know, he was a little upset about some things that, that Charleston had said. But it's real. I, I feel the same way he feel because I'm looking at it. And I'm seeing black people get on television, get on podcasts, and they complaining about white people. They talking about police. And they saying, we ain't got no chances in this world. We got to work harder than white people. And I, and I remember growing up in Town, Fort Worth, Texas, where he grew up at. I remember growing up in Texas. I remember being on Ramey. I remember uh, my cousin used to live the street across from Lil John. And I remember... Lil John had a gang on the street that you couldn't wear certain colors on that street. Or you, you might get killed or something. Hmm. You, you know, I, like I, I remember back then when we thought gang banging was cool. My cousin them jumped us in five dudes Hoover Crip when I was young and we thought it was cool. He, they jumped us in right on the couch, had a blue flag in his hand, yellow flag in his hand. They beat me and my brother up. And then, of course, they didn't hit us in the face because we we kids and we they cousins. So they didn't fully jump us in like, like we were a real gang. You have to fight back. But we got jumped and we thought it was cool. Ain't not one time we worried about white people when I was growing up. You hear rumors of white folks don't like, but in the, in, in, when you grow up. You guys, one thing I just want to add here is that as much as black people keep complaining about white people being the reason why they are not successful, just bear in mind that there are so many successful black people out there and nobody stopped them so i don't know how the whites are stopping the blacks from being successful what do you guys think about this you guys think that white people are the ones making the blacks not to be successful let me know your thoughts in the comment section and let's continue you guys the person that the person that's likely to kill you is another brother i remember i went that's and true. i could talk about this for like three hours I remember I went to Crowley High School. My daddy got promoted on this job. We moved from Forest Hill to Crowley. And Crowley is a white neighborhood, middle class white neighborhood. So we moved to Crowley. We started going to Crowley High School, Crowley Middle School, Crowley High School, majority white. The, the, the middle school was clean. We learned, we did powerlifting in middle school. 
They teach, they taught us how to lift weights in, in seventh grade. We competitively lift weights in eighth grade. You get to the high school, the, t- the classrooms are clean, new books, desks. They had a study hall that after, after school, before you go home, you had a study hall where you get tutoring at. This is a public school. We had a weight room. We had a gym. We had power lifting. We had, I mean, we had actual power lifting coming. My brother won state in power lifting. Track and field. I mean, they had everything. Because of football, we wanted to go to uh, Dunbar because they had a football team, and we wanted to go to the league. So Dunbar had a cold team. Dunbar were known for athletes. We went to Dunbar. Me and my, both, my brother both were All-American football players at Dunbar. But when you go to Dunbar, the same book and desk and chairs are the same ones that my mama sit in when she went to Dunbar. <laughs> People coming off the street fighting in the school. And they had a police officer on campus. I never forget, I got suspended because my girlfriend was a fighter. And so she beat up the dude. I thought the dude beat up because she called me crying. I come back for lunch. I almost towed my car up, put it in park where I was driving. I jump out and I am embarrassed at how I act. Now I am. But then I thought it was tough. I'm cussing. I'm calling that dude the N-word in front of people. Parents, man, they suspended me for three days over that. But while I was gone... There were 11 fights at the school, 11 separate fights. People coming off the street in the school fight. The, the halls smell so nice. like pepper spray because when the fights break out, they just they just spray pepper spray in the hallways. I remember um, B.A. Y'all don't know who B.A. is. B.A. brother got out of prison. He riding through the parking lot. Some other dude, brother. Is another gang banger prison dude. He drives through the parking lot. He flashing money like this. We kids. He a grown man flashing money out of his car. Him and B.A. brother almost hit in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. B.A. brother, who just got out of prison, went to the back of his car, pulled out a big old gun, and we got a police officer on campus. Wow. The police officer's coming out. B.A. brother got the gun in his hand. He jump in the car. They chase each other. And, and the cop get in the car and chase them down the street. They almost shot each start shooting in the parking lot. I'll tell you this. One of the guys on our team, I ain't going to say his name because he a real gangster. And I, I don't know how he's still living. He may want to kill me or something for putting his name out there. We had a dude on our team. He, he was a crip. I think he was a crip or a blood. I can't remember. He used to carry a gun to practice every day. He put the gun in his lock. It was a revolver. He take the revolver out, put the gun in his locker. Lee take the gun out, store his gun, and football practice. He played football. He had to have a gun on him. Wow, you guys, this is a very shocking one. And I don't know that the gangsterism within the black community is this bad. If there is a word as that, or what Officer Tatum is saying right now is making me so so surprised because this kind of thing doesn't happen over here people over here are normally behaved and even when there is a court or anything or such that is going on they hardly bring it to to the school premises this is very very shocking and you guys let's wrap this video up i I just ody was way worse than dunbar half of the half of the girls at ody were lesbians we, we, they did a tax Ooh. test where you have to take the state text, state test in, tax, in Texas in order to, to uh, graduate. Zero. This is an 05. Zero people from ODY passed the test. Zero. That means no kid at the school passed the, the exit test from Texas. And it was the first year. I'm going to tell you how bad it is. It was the first year, so you only had to make like a 40%. Zero people made at least a 40% on the test. Zero. Wow. Polly was just as bad. Eastern Hills was bad. All the black schools were bad. The white schools were fine. All the black schools were bad. Southwest, Western Hills, all these white schools were totally fine. Dunbar High School, they right down the street from the school, they selling dope to the crackheads and they wash your cars. Right up on Ramey. Charleston wow. know what I'm talking about. Right on Ramey. I remember I gave a crackhead some money to wash my car. 
And that's when I stopped. When I saw him smoke the crack is when I stopped doing it. Because I never see them smoke crack. I just give them money. They wash the car. We know they crackheads. But I saw that brother back there bubbling that crack in that pipe. It, it, it broke my heart. I said, how can I be doing this to my own people? And I never went to that car wash again. But the dope boys, to this day, they still parked outside that car wash. But anyway, if you live in Town, Fort Worth, you know what I'm talking about. Charleston ain't lying. But why is it that we become disingenuous? And y'all talking about somebody delivery. We the, per capita, we have abortions more than anybody. We are not married. We're, our children are being born out of wedlock more than anybody. Committing dangerous crimes more than anybody per capita, by far. Murders more than anybody. Murder victims, more than, murder suspects more than anybody. In, negative interaction with police more than anybody, by far. Crimes against other races more than anybody by far. Black people commit twice as much crime against whites as whites against blacks. Look at the smashing wow. grabs. Our reputation. We got LeBron James in the NBA, one of the richest basketball players to ever live. He told me he can't leave his house without being afraid of police officers. Colin Kaepernick made up this big fuss, took a knee during the national anthem, called a suit the NFL. Made a documentary saying the NFL is racist and, and the and the uh, the draft is a, is a, like a slave trade, and then he writing a letter to the NFL begging to get back in the league. We had the biggest movement in world history with Black Lives Matter, and what did Black people do with that? We 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 grifted. We had an organization making sixty, seventy, a hundred million dollars. Billions of dollars of donations across the world. And, and, and the leader of the organization is a fraud. She had to step down. She buying mansions in white neighborhoods. White people being her security guards. This is what we do when we, we got a movement. This is what we do. I could talk a hundred years. I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm out. Wow, you guys. That was such an interesting one from Officer Tatum and let me know what you guys think about this video. What do you think about Charleston White? Do you agree with what he said in this video? If you did, leave a comment in the comment section. And I really had fun with this video. If you guys totally enjoyed watching, give this video a massive thumbs up, comment, share, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.